I think he's polarizing because of our next guy on the list. And I'm going to say it because it helps this conversation. Okay. He's polarizing because the number four most polarizing player in the game today is Mike Trout. Mm. And I think Mookie Betts is polarizing because Mike, Mookie Betts is the same player as Mike Trout. That's my lifestyle. <laughs> What's going on, guys? We're back for another episode of The Grounds Crew. Bill, I'm excited about this one, man. we got a lot of interesting topics, and I think this one right here is one of my favorites. Uh, top five most polarizing players in baseball. Yeah. The, do you want to go number one? To five, or do you want to go five to one? Let's go one to five, because I know we got some interesting interesting takes at the bottom. Cool. So, the most polarizing player in the game right now, Trevor Bauer. Agree to disagree? Uh, agree. I think he the, the, the stuff he's done over the last year and a half or so has definitely made his name the, at the forefront of, of baseball content, baseball topics, good or bad, how he went about his free agency process. Everybody was talking about him, good or bad. Everyone knew his name, what he was doing, where he was. And I think that's what being the polarizing player is all about. I think um, he tries to be the most polarizing player in baseball. Yes, I don't think he... He's who kids look up to and aspire to be no in one. that aspect. But he does try his hardest to be that guy. I, 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 don't, I don't think he does either. I don't, I don't think he's trying to be the guy that kids look up to. I don't think he cares. Ultimately, I, I think the, what he wants is his... He wants to be right. Yeah. He just wants to be historically right. And as long as he's right, he doesn't care. Yeah. But in the course of that, he'll burn bridges with every single person in the path to be to right. being what he deems correct. Yes. Right? So he obviously had he he'll he'll share other people's tweets and social media stuff. Well now some of the stuff that he has is coming back up with saying stuff about uh, you know, Donald Trump in the twenty sixteen mm-hmm. election and people are like, Hey, you said some stuff about building a wall and now you're going to LA Dodgers, we're never going to a Dodgers game again. Yeah. Guess what? You're hated now. You're not polarizing. Yeah. And well, that's he, why I don't think he's the face of baseball. That's why he's our most polarizing guy, but not the face of baseball. Definitely not the face. He's, he doesn't do enough of the good and stuff. And I'll agree polarizing just by the fact that he finally had a season that gives him some credibility to what he's always said. Right. You know, you put together a shortened year where you were a great pitcher. I still don't think you were the Cy Young winner. Mm-hmm. I think that you use anything, a weighted schedule, to justify who you played when – Jacob DeGrom played a tougher schedule and did better against tougher opponents. Yep. So, yeah, your numbers look pretty and they look nice and you were able to do them in a shortened year. So now you at least have credibility of saying, I'm one of the best. Mm-hmm. Before, you were just a really good player. Right. You know, so everybody could just shoo-shoo you away. Now you have an opportunity to kind of put yourself out there. Uh, number two most polarizing player in the game, Fernando Tatis Jr. What do you think? 100%. And he is who I would start trending to as the face of baseball he has done all the right things he's exciting he he lives to to be entertaining to just enjoy the game he just signed his massive deal for forever with the with the Padres that that's a big thing kids look up and they say I want to go play baseball so I can make the big bucks and do all that stuff and I, he's on the face he's of only polarizing because old people don't like that he's the new way of the game right Good or bad. I don't think, but see, that's my. That I just disagree. So we put this list together, mm-hmm. right? This is one of the ones I disagree with. Okay. Because I don't think he's polarizing unless you're including people whose opinions I don't think matter. Guys who are 60 years old don't matter to the game anymore. Oh, yeah. but I've loved the game longer. Everything else, that's great. The kid who wants to go to the game, loves it, is invested, and is going to be a fan for the next 60 years. Right? That kid matters more to where the the future of the game is going. Yeah, hundred percent. That kid loves Tatis. Yeah. So I, I don't think he's polarizing to the the fans that matter now. He matters. He's polarizing to people who are like, "Hey, Babe Ruth is the greatest player ever." Still, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I get it. He was, but he also was competing against people who weren't as good. Yeah. So w- at what point in time do does, does your fandom have to step aside for the future? Mm-hmm. Right. People talk about music. Right? Oh, rap music is terrible. Right? I hate rap music. Why? Well, my I love you know '80s rock and roll. Mm-hmm. That's cool because that was your favorite music when you were a kid. So if the music of today is for the 18 year old, that's the thing. Step aside. Yeah. Don't hate theirs like your parents hated your music. Mm-hmm. Right? It's the same thing with baseball. But baseball is so like it's self polarizing that we create these fake polarizations. I think Tatis, everybody loves. Who matters? Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. I, I, I like that. I think it just comes down to, like you said, the people who matter now 
just just love what he's doing, and that's what and that's where I think the game of baseball needs to go is have m uh, as many Fernando Tatises as we can because that's how we're going to change the game. Now you're polarizing. <laughs> so number three, you, you picked this guy, and I wanted to hear your reason why. Mookie Betts. <laughs> Mookie Betts. Oh yeah. Mookie Betts went from a big star on the Red Sox. You knew his name. You knew he was one of the best players in the game. But I think he was definitely underrated while he was there. And he went into one of the biggest markets in baseball at the Dodgers, signed a massive deal, and then he was really on the big stage. And I think that's where he's shined. Um, as a black player, he definitely also has kind of started captivating that audience more. And I think you know, young black kids are going to go want to play the game because of that. And, and he's a phenomenal player, and I think that's what makes him such a big deal there. So, but what what makes him polarizing to you? I just think that he's he kind of goes about his business, and and I think that some people kind of just don't like who who he is and what kind of he's all about. Is going to play, going to just change the game, and be a, an out a forward facing guy. I think he's polarizing because of our next guy on the list, and I'm going to say it because it helps this conversation. Okay, he's polarizing because the number four most polarizing player in the game today. Is Mike Trout, mm -hmm. and I think Mookie Betts is polarizing because Mike, Mookie Betts is the same player as Mike Trout. Yeah, and no one wants to hear that because it's the it's the Jordan problem and it's this or that. Mm -hmm. But like Mookie Betts has had in the same in the last you know decade, those two have been neck and neck in a lot of different instances. Yeah, you look at numbers, home runs, abilities to play. Mookie Betts has been there. The only difference now is Mookie Betts has a ring on his finger, and Mike Trout never will. Mike Trout's been to one playoff game. <laughs> Mike Trout never will, because yeah. we talked about it. Mike Trout by himself in a vacuum doesn't equate to winning. Yep. Right. It's why these mega super contracts rarely work out, is because you sign it and the team can't do anything. Mm -hmm. You you stuck yourself in a situation where they can't make moves, they can't do stuff. Your team is mediocre around you, yeah. and in a game that so relies on individual performances, paying one guy so much money of what you're willing to pay anybody subtracts from what you can do yep. and I would say that you know over the last five years Mookie Betts has had a bigger impact on winning than Mike Trout but the Mike Trout you know fanatics mm -hmm. the people who want him to be the face of the game because he's a white dude who doesn't talk keeps his head down plays it the game the way it's supposed to be played right. everybody wants Mike to be the the, the face of baseball yep. all, and the, all the old heads who are the cookie cutter, keep your head down, play the game, shut up, go make your millions, awesome. Yeah. That that's their that's their face of baseball, but they, that's not the case. And that's why Mike Trout yeah. is number four on our list. Yes. Because Mike Trout is all of the bad things about baseball and all of the good things about baseball at the same time. Right. He will not participate in making the game fun. Right? He doesn't do any of the things to bring engagement, pump it up, speak speak out against things. Nobody's putting a mic in his face all the time and trying to interview him. Bryce Harper wasn't as good as a player and never has been mm -hmm. as Trout, but Harper has always been asked his opinions on things because he's an interesting human, Yeah. right? They tried to force him to be the face of the game mm -hmm. because he was at least entertaining, Yes. right? Trout's a good baseball player and that's great. And that's awesome. You can go and be that. But to be the face of the game, that's why the game's boring and, and lame half the time. Yep. And it's interesting you brought up Bryce Harper because something that we were talking about too is that when Harper first came up, he was a super interesting, exciting guy, made all these cool comments as a clown question, bro, all this stuff. He was everywhere, had a lot of talent. But once he kind of made his big money, he didn't talk anymore. And now you Secured kind of just notice the fact that he's kind of just an average player now. Hey, listen, I've, I've said multiple times, you look at him and a guy like Mike, Michael Conforto on the Mets, mm -hmm. they're roughly the same age, they're roughly the same ability level. Harper has had bigger extremes, mm -hmm. he's had way better seasons, and he's had way worse seasons than Conforto. Right. But when you look at their raw numbers, their OPS, things like that, they're very, very similar every single year. Harper is making life-altering money. I don't know if you're going to see the same thing for a guy like Conforto. Mm -hmm. And that's because Harper was willing to be all those things. But now that Harper secured the bag and he got paid to be this great player, he's like, I don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fade fade away. But like, I think that also comes down to being famous from a young age, yeah. right? It's Justin Bieber syndrome, 
right? Bieber's less out there than he was when he was young. Mm -hmm. But when he was young and he was famous and he had everything, he wanted to go and experience everything. I think Harper was the same thing. Right. Now that he's an older guy in the game, right? He, he's in his prime. He just wants to be about his business. He's married, w wants to work on his family, which I respect, yeah, absolutely. right? But he's taken a, a step away from the limelight. When you're the face of the game, truly, mm -hmm. right? You don't get to take a step away, right? right? And that's what I think baseball doesn't have is a guy who is willing to stand there and be the face every day mm -hmm. and not, not shy away. Right? LeBron is, is going to be 36 this year, right? Or he's 36 now. If LeBron's 36 right now, he got drafted at 18. He's had 18 years of being, quote unquote, in the conversation of face of basketball. Right. And he's never shied away. He's leaned in. Mm -hmm. Baseball, guys don't care. And that's why the game has problems. Yeah. Somebody's not willing to be for 15 years like Jeter. Jeter was the last time I feel like you had a face of baseball. Mm -hmm. And Jeter was going out and partying and... and, and going to events and talking to kids and talking to the media and, and saying difficult things directly to the camera that nobody in baseball has really taken that. Right. So that's why I think Trout's polarizing is because he's an amazing player. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. but he's refused to be the face of the game publicly. Yeah. And, uh, and number five on our list, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of question marks about. We had uh, a few different people we were thinking of. You had uh, an interesting point that I would like for you to share. I think it's, it's definitely something that people have talked about before. Yeah, so my, my number five most polarizing player in baseball is Aaron Judge. And the reason why I think Judge is so polarizing is, one, being in the New York market, you always get an enhanced you're better mm -hmm. because of being in New York and the media being able to drum up your good and your bad. Yeah. So when Judge had that breakout season, you only saw this magical unicorn player. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you and I have discussed many times off camera is Judge is always hurt. Yeah. So at some point in time, the, the guy can be as talented as you want to be, but I don't think that he's an MVP player. Mm -hmm. Right, he's a guy who should be a DH who's being forced to play the field, and Yankees fans will be like, "Oh, but he's such a good defensive player." That's great. Every time he makes a great defensive play, he spends 14 days on the DL because of it. Yeah. Right, and at that point in time, you're you're if you can do it once, and then you got to sit for two weeks, mm -hmm. you're not a great player. Right, you made a great play. Yeah, and if you can't consistently show up and be that guy all the time, you're not a great player. And I would say that I think Judge is a, a really, really good player. And he's got a huge bet. But he's Adam Dunn with more personality, mm -hmm. and he plays in New York. Yeah. But outside of that, you, 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 you hit big home runs, you walk, you strike out, and you need to be a DH. Do you think them bringing in Stanton is hindering his growth and success? You ask me that question like you don't know my answer, right? Yes, absolutely. The Yankees' biggest problem over the last five years is that they're oddly misconstructed. Mm -hmm. They look like the Knicks looked, where you had too many power forwards and everybody was making a joke about the fact that the Knicks went out and signed seven power forwards and only one guy can play, right? right? The, the Yankees have three guys over the last few years who needed to be full-time DHs. And they weren't allowed to be full-time DHs because they were all on the same team. Yep. Stanton, Judge, and Gary Sanchez. Yep. All of those guys' predominant position should be that they are hitters. Yep. Right? And that they step up in the American League, they swing a bat, and then they go sit down. Right? That's what they should be doing. But because all of them exist in a vacuum on one team, they each get hurt. Yep. And everybody's like, oh, I hate that this guy gets hurt. Or this. If they could just stand up, swing the bat, go sit down, they'd get hurt less. Now their bat would be in the lineup more. But that player is not as valuable as somebody who shows up every day. And I just think Judge is going to end up only playing 120 games a year because he's going to be if hurt. Lucky. He's going to be hurt for 40, mm -hmm. right? And if a guy is playing two out of three games because of that, that's a problem. Just mm -hmm. put him to DH, and we have no problems. Now, you play the National League, and they don't have a DH, and you have to play the field? Cool. That's the time where you can go and do a little warm-up and go play out the field to keep your bat in the lineup. But he could be a better player, if he, a better asset to the team if he was allowed to be that. But to hear him ever in an MVP conversation, not it. That ain't it, Chief. And that's me. Yeah. What, what, what do you think of my opinion? Uh, I think you, you definitely made some good points. Um, I would say something that I think is a little bit um, just kind of different on my end is, is the fact that he is 
who he is and as a, a big person, as someone who kind of just plays in New York, there's some kind of Titan aspect to him. And when he is on the field and when he is performing, <laughs> people all over the world want to be Aaron Judge. And they want to they want to do what he does and, and and see what he stands for and I think that's but do of, they or is that because we live in New York because we live in New York absolutely but that's my thing like I don't think people Yankee all over the world anywhere. I don't think that I don't think people yeah Yankees fans all over the world right, right? But he's the face of the Yankees quote unquote right now but is he maybe maybe not because Garrett Cole came in but prior to that yeah he was probably their absolutely guy. fear the gap. Yeah. Right, he was the new Michael Strahan, well, even though he got his now. new teeth now, which yeah. <laughs> you you went you ruined the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't look at the rest of baseball and people think, oh, I wish I want to one day grow up to be Aaron Judge. You look at Aaron Judge and you're like, yeah, of course he hits big home runs. He's 280 pounds and he's six foot eight. Yeah. He should gain some weight and be an offensive tackle in the NFL. Like the dude Next is just <laughs> uh, uh, when he slows down, mm-hmm. right? Like t- to to me. Yankees fans put Judge on a pedestal that he just doesn't belong on. Mm-hmm. And you can say Titan, yeah, because he's huge, right? But, like, when I actually look at kids, no kid looks at a guy who's a huge man and says, I want to be him when I grow up, right? Right, kids, what he stands kids for. Don't, kids don't look at, at in the past. They don't look at Shaquille O'Neal and be like, I want to be Shaq when I grow up. Mm-hmm. Nobody's out here doing baby dunks like – Backing you down, and they're practicing that. Mm-hmm. Why did Why did everybody go crazy for Steph Curry? Because Steph Curry was looked short, mm-hmm. looked average, went out there and drained shots. Guess what? Every kid in the country is like, I can shoot the ball. Yep. I can throw it up from half court. Mm-hmm. He looks like me. It's why baseball's always had fans. It looks right. like everyday dudes playing a sport, right? Judge nobody idolizes like that because nobody can say, oh, when I grow up, I'll be 6'8", 280. Yeah, no, for sure. So I think he's polarizing, and obviously we agree Mm -hmm. because we have differing opinions on it. Guys, in the comments, let us know what you think. Do you agree with our top five list? Do you think there's somebody else? Or do you think Trevor Bauer takes all top five spots? We appreciate you guys listening. We look forward to listening to you next time. Peace. Baseball lifestyle. It's my lifestyle.